Hello, guys. Welcome and welcome to BT International Academy, one of the leading academy in training nurses and the nursing competitive exam as well as IELTS and Lex and OID training. And today, in this magical session, we are going to discuss very important topic that is infusion therapy. First, let's start with the basics, okay? And if you like the video, please like it, share it, and subscribe the channel so that it will be motivating us to post more and more videos, guys. Okay? So let's begin the session with their motivational thoughts. So don't compare your life with, with others. There is no comparison between sun and moon. This shines when it when the time comes. Okay, it is easy to understand the concept. So everyone is having the talent, but the time comes, you have to wait for the time. Definitely, if the time comes, you will shine. Okay, fine. So with this thought, let's talk the uh, today's topic. That is today, I'm going to discuss about what infusion therapy. It is one of the topic in the fundamental of nursing. Very important topic, infusion therapy. Most of the time, simple questions they were used to ask from this topic only, but still very important topics. Okay, let's start from the simple questions. Slow infusion of isotonic solution into the subcutaneous tissue is called as first. And let's understand the key point. Here, there are two key points are there: isotonic solution infused in subcutaneous tissue. That's all. If you know the these two key points directly, we can go for the answer. Let's see what are the options they have given here. Hypodermoclysis, plasmapheresis, dialysis, and entroclysis. Let's discuss about the options first. Hypodermoclysis, in the last, we will be discussing about hypodermoclysis. Other options like plasmapheresis. In plasmapheresis, they used to remove the blood plasma and if there is any, you know, uh, toxic substance or if there is any autoimmune antibodies, we used to remove that and we will be giving back the blood plasma to the patient. Mostly in case of autoimmune disorder, we will be doing what? Plasma pheresis. Very common autoimmune disorders like, you know, uh, multiple sclerosis, it is one type of hypersensitivity reaction and also myasthenia gravis. Just an example, there are so many autoimmune disorders. For, you know, these kind of autoimmune disorders, they used to do very commonly plasma pheresis in order to remove the autoimmune antibodies. The next one is dialysis. Very simple. As you all know, hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis in order to remove the toxic substance if the kidney is not at all functioning. The last one is entroclysis. By injecting the dye or by giving the dye, we are going to examine the small intestine that is called as what? Entroclysis. Okay, fine. So three options we have cleared. The first option, hypodermoclysis. What is that? So you can see here, here for this question, the right answer is hypodermoclysis. So what is hypodermoclysis? Very clearly it is given in the question itself. That is we are going to infuse some fluid that is isotonic solution in the subcutaneous tissue. So here you can see the uh, vital points. I have added some vital points. Just check into it. Hypodermoclysis. In short, it is called as HDC. It is a technique for administering fluids, especially isotonic solution subcutaneously or under the skin. Okay, they are using the, you know, uh, butterfly gauge needle and they will, be, they will be inserting in the subcutaneous region and they are infusing the isotonic solution in order to treat the dehydration, mainly for dehydration. Okay, the next important point, uh, what you supposed to ask is, for which patient we supposed to use this kind of, you know, fluids like uh, hypodermoclysis procedure. What, for what patient we can use the hypodermoclysis? For critically ill patient, terminally ill patient or older adult or old age people, we can use this kind of hypodermoclysis, okay? If they are bedridden, okay? For those patients, in order to hydrate those people, we can use the hypodermoclysis. So these are all the indications. Older people or terminally ill patients, okay? And fluid use, what are the common type of fluid we can use for this patient? As I told, told already, isotonic solution like Ringer, lactate, normal saline, uh, dextrose. So these solutions or fluids we can give for the patients, okay? And uh, as I mentioned already, it is used for terminally ill patient and older adult, okay? And what area, in which part of the body we can use it very commonly? In the abdomen or in the shoulder or in the arms or even in the forehead, we can use this uh, hypodermoclysis okay main thing is we are going to insert the uh, butterfly gauze needle in uh, you know uh, ivy cannula in subcutaneous tissue so that point you're supposed to remember for treating the dehydration okay fine so this question asked three four times in the previous year examination so please make a note of it and the next one is five percentage of glucose saline means glucose saline two key point they have given here and the main thing is five percentage they are asking five percentage is equal to five grams okay please remember that concept and here they are asking five percent five grams or five percentage of glucose in saline saline means 0 0.9 percentage always remember saline means 0 0.9 percentage saline okay and five percentage of glucose means five gram of glucose okay so if you know these two concepts very clearly then easily you can go for the answer let's see the options See, 100 ml contain for each and every option, 100 ml is there. 5 gram glucose in 
5 gram sodium chloride. Next one, 5 gram glucose and 0.9% sodium chloride. 5 gram glucose, 0.45 sodium chloride. 5 gram glucose, 0.9% or gram sodium chloride. So here the right answer is what? As I mentioned already, 5% means just convert into gram. That is 5 grams of glucose. Saline means always 0.9%. So it will make you to go to the answer option B. That is each 100 ml contain 5 gram glucose and 0.9 gram of sodium chloride. So the right answer is what? Option B. Okay. So whatever I mentioned, it is clearly given in the rational that usually if it is coming in percentage means how much amount of solute, solute means what particles or molecules, whatever it is, that is called a solute. So what, how much amount of solute dissolved in 100 ml of water or 100 ml of fluid or solution. Okay. So here 5 percentage of glucose, it is converted to grams means 5 grams. Okay. So 5 gram of glucose, which is present in saline, saline means 0 0.9 percentage of sodium chloride. That's all. So it will take you to the option B. Okay. Fine. The next question is, which type of solution causes the water to shift from cells to plasma? Always keep in mind, cells means intracellular space. Plasma means it is the one which is present in the blood that is coming under what? Extracellular fluid. So what type of solution if you are giving means the amount, excess amount of fluid which is present in the cells will be shifted to the blood that is plasma. Okay, fine. So it is very simple question only, but the key points are very important. I'll be explaining that. So you know the answer already. I hope so. That is here. The right answer is what? Option D that is hypertonic solution. We have to give what? Hypertonic solution only in order to shift the fluid from the intracellular space that is in from the cell to the extracellular space into the, uh, you know, uh, blood, blood stream. Okay, fine. So here the rational you can see one by one hypotonic solution means it is a solution having a great osmotic pressure. Okay, great osmotic pressure is present in the hypotonic solution. You know about osmosis, diffusion, uh, ultrafiltration. I think uh, already have to explained clearly about all these things. Okay, fine. So hypotonic solution means what? Greater osmotic pressure is present. Okay, so that is called as what? Hypotonic solution. So if you are giving the hypotonic solution, it will attract all the excess water which is present in the cells, nearby cells. It will attract the water, excess water which is present from the nearby cells. Okay. So that is the function of hypertonic solution. Mostly in case of edema, we will be giving this. And the second point is, as I mentioned already, it draws out the water from the cells. It takes the water from the intracellular space into the extracellular space. Extracellular space is nothing but blood, blood vessels. Okay. It takes the blood excess fluid, sorry, not blood. It takes the excess fluid from the intracellular space into the blood vessels. Okay. So this procedure is called as what? Plasmolysis. Here it is mentioned very clearly plasmolysis. So in the exam, they can ask what is meant by plasmolysis also. So plasmolysis means there is a movement of water, excess amount of water from the intracellular space to the extracellular space by means of giving some kind of hypertonic solution. So once this procedure is over, automatically the cells, intracellular space, uh, that is the intracellular cells will become contract. So here it is mentioned very clearly, plasmolysis means shrinking or decreasing of the cytoplasm of the living cells. You know that what is the meaning of cytoplasm? There is a cell in the cell, just think like this, take a plate, Take a plate, okay, just pour water on the plate and put some pieces of paper over the plate, paper, okay, what will happen? The paper will float over the plate, right, because water is present, right, the same way take a cell, cell, and in the cell, cytoplasm is present, on the cytoplasm only the nucleus, mitochondria, cold gay bodies, and rough endoplasmic reticulum, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, everything is floating, okay, so cytoplasm is basically a, you know, uh, it's like a fluid part, okay, Fine. So those cytoplasm is taken out. So automatically what is happening? Shrinking or decreasing of the cytoplasm in the living cells will taking place. Okay. So this procedure is called as what? Plasmolysis. Okay. Fine. So the next one is. So osmolality of 0.45 percentage of sodium chloride is very simple question. This question really asked three times in the examination. Osmolality of 0.45 percentage of sodium chloride is they are asking the osmolality. Very simple question and direct question. And here the right answer is what option A that is 154 milli osmoles per liter. They are asking and the of NS that is 0.45 sodium chloride osmolality. So here the right answer is what 154 milli osmoles per liter. See there are two types of things you know osmolality and osmolarity. 
Osmolality, L-I-T-Y, Litty. It is there mentioned in this question. And Osmolality. See, Osmolality and Osmolality both are used to measure the amount of solutes present in the solvent. Amount of particles present in the fluid we are going to measure by means of using different ways. That is called as what? Osmolality and Osmolarity. If you are measuring in, you know, uh, kg, if you are measuring in kg, that is called as what? Lit osmolality, L-I-T-Y. And if you are measuring in volume, okay, that is called as what? Osmolarity, R-I-T-Y. Okay, so that is the basic difference between osmolality and osmolarity. In both the things, you are going to measure the amount of solutes present in the solvent only. Amount of particle present in the liquid or fluid only. But how you are measuring, that is going to change. Okay, if you are measuring in kg, it is called as what? Litty. If you are measuring in volume, it is called as what? Ritty, R -I -T -Y. Okay, fine. So the next question is, how much salt must be added in one liter of water to make a solution of normal saline 0 0.9? It is a scenario practical based question. Very important question. Here the question what they are asking is, how much amount of salt you must be added in one liter of water? You are taking one liter of water, how much amount of salt you have to add to make 0 0.9 percentage of sodium chloride? So this is the question. So easy to understand in single line. So no need to worry about that. So here four options are given. That is 19 gram. 90 gram, 0 0.9 gram and 9 gram. So how much amount of salt on among these four options, how much amount of salt you need to add in one liter of water to make 0 0.9 percentage of normal saline. And here the right answer is option D that is 9 gram. You have to take what? 9 gram of salt and it has to be added in one liter of water to make 0 0.9 percentage of sodium chloride. Here the key points I have mentioned here, the normal saline usually contains 0 0.9 percentage of sodium chloride, right? So, okay. So, second point is one liter of normal saline contain 9 gram of sodium chloride. That's why we selected this option, option D. Okay, fine. One liter of normal saline contain 9 gram of sodium chloride means 100 ml of normal saline contain 0 0.9 percentage of sodium chloride. Okay, 100 ml of fluid contains 0.9 percentage of sodium chloride. If you want to say in percentage, you can say in percentage. If you want to say in grams, you can say in grams, no problem. But on the whole, 100 ml, 0.9 percentage of normal saline will be present. In case of 1 liter, 9 gram of sodium chloride will be present. These two are very, very important points. Please remember that. Okay, the next one is... Yes, that's it. So these are all the basic questions only and detailed uh, other detailed questions we'll be discussing in the uh, next upcoming videos. So if you have any doubts anywhere, please drop your message in the chat box and all the best for your upcoming examination every day morning in alternate every day. Nowadays, alternate days, we are posting the magical session. Please watch the video on all the topics, whatever you're discussing is very important topic and all the question what we are discussing is already asked three or four times in the examination. So watch the video. If you like the video, please like it, share it and subscribe the channel before watching the video so that it will motivate us to post more and more videos guys. And thank you very much.